uses that left arm. James Harden sells a little bit, gets the call. Harden had 37. Ty Lue afterwards about the Paul George deal. Hey, Ty, uh, was PG not in there at the end because of a uh, minutes restriction? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was there any way that uh, – was, was, it, was it planned that, that he would only go until maybe like the last four minutes, or was it just you guys were – he was going so well you had to keep him in there? Um, I thought, you know, the game kind of got out of hand, and, you know, we had to bring him back to, to get the game closed. And uh, he played well and played good to get us back in it. And then, you know, it's a tough decision. But like I said, the, the, the biggest thing is, is that he's healthy, and the, big, and the biggest thing is the player's health. And um, we did what we could, and, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Pleased to be joined now by Tim Legler. Ty Lu says it is what it is, Tim. What is it? <laughs> Absurd, illogical, a tough sell to me. None of it makes sense because, look, I, I understand what they're saying, and they had a plan going into it, but you're going to tell me 33 minutes is the number, right? That's a dead cutoff. 35 is too many. doesn't make any sense. And if the number is 33, well, then you've got to figure out a way to manipulate those minutes so it's available for the last five or six. The reason this is so absurd to me is because this was a night in which Paul George was flowing on such a level. He wasn't taxed trying to get his number. The guy was barely breaking a sweat. He was not breathing hard and he was flowing. And now you're going to take him out for the last 250. And look, you end up getting it into a one possession game and you have an opportunity to win. A tough call goes against you on the Kawhi drive. I get that. But this, this was an opportunity to, to win that game if Paul George stays on the floor. And just for me, just how illogical it becomes when you start laying out this hard number of 33, that's safe, but 35, now we're really risking a guy's health. That's that's just a really tough sell for me, Scott. I'm sorry. Uh, you don't have to apologize to me because I agree with everything you said. The Nets win in the end, partly, maybe because of that, uh, but also because of the high-level performances of the two stars who did play in this one for them in Kyrie and Harden. What impressed you most about those? Very different storyline in this one from what we've been seeing on this team on this West Coast trip because they just put together an incredible stretch shooting the ball from the three-point line as a team. 81 made threes in the last four games and 49% to do it. So you could tell the Clippers were intent on not giving up some of those role player threes when you start over committing help. And I think they look at their personnel and say, look, if we've got great individual defenders, then we're going to try to play these guys as much as we can with single coverage. And you see what happens. Great shot making. James Harden with the jab step three. Kyrie Irving there with a the little pull up mid range. And then he gets the switch here and just blows by Morris knowing that they've got a small lineup on the floor and there's two guards underneath the rim if he can get by Morris and get all the way to the rim. So this was a different storyline, and this is what we saw a lot of early with this team, which was basically just great shot making every night out of their top three guys. Then they went out west, and you saw that ball start hopping around, and you saw guys get unbelievable looks. And now you say, well, how is anyone supposed to deal with that when they move it that way? Now was the answer against an elite defensive team, particularly in the perimeter, loaded it with guys that can guard these two players, and yet – their individual greatness when they weren't allowing the pass to be made and the array of shot making was just off the charts. And it's amazing because Kevin Durant's their best player and he wasn't out there. The Clippers are at full strength and they still couldn't deal with these two guys. It's, it's really, you look at them, Scott, and say, how is anybody in the Eastern Conference supposed to deal with that? Um, I was talking with some guys in Philly today and I was kind of teasing them saying, this might have been your year because the Bucks, Boston, you know, Miami, these teams are all mediocre right now. And then Brooklyn goes and does this because when they're playing like this offensively and they've picked up their effort on the other end, nobody's beating this team in the Eastern Conference and maybe not at all in the entire league. That remains to be seen. I need to see them play the Lakers at full strength. Yeah, and I'm doing the math on this. It's the middle of February, five months from now, middle of July. That's when the NBA Finals fi uh, will, will end. And you got five months for them to figure it out and get even more, more refined. I mean, I, I'm with you. I don't, I don't see how in Philly, I'm sure, would like to – likes to say something about this, and they'll get their chance come springtime. As always, Tim, we appreciate it, man. We'll talk again. I'm getting this in, and again, some highlights of that one are coming a little bit later. Nets looking to sweep a, fi a five-game road trip. Last five, <laughs> last three have come without Kevin Durant. Still out with a strained hamstring as the Nets took on the Clips. Still got plenty of star power. James Harden, Kawhi, and 
plenty more on the floor in this one. Kawhi, 14 in the first quarter. Straight away three and the clips up six. On the other end, my name is James Harden. Got a beard like a billy goat. He steps back and right back at you. Harden. Kyrie. Easy. Harden and Irving combined for 25 of the 28 first quarter points. Harden had 21, eight rebounds and four assists in the first half. And the Nets had a seven point lead. Third quarter. Nicola Batum has the good look. No, Joe Harris. Woo woo! Outlet. Kyrie. Transition punch. Kevin Durant appreciating that. Later in the third. The handles. Left. And left. Nets lead eight. Kyrie. 12 points in the third quarter, and the lead is double digits. Heading into. The fourth. Into the fourth, clips down 11. Paul George steps into the three. Bottoms, but he was on a minutes restriction, not in late. Down low, it is Ivica Zubats for the dunk. Steve Ballmer. Pretty damn oh. cool! Woo! Six point lead, Harden step back. Now it's a seven point game into the fourth late when three is hit. That's George, four point game. Down low it's Harris who puts the Nets up six. Six point game. Kyrie, his layup package is extensive. The ability to finish is excellent. Corner three coming, again Ballmer. Again, where is it? Ah, oh, it's too late. That was a Lou Williams three. Kyrie, late after the game was tied with free throws, the tip in from DeAndre Jordan. And the net lead was two. Love it. Early in the shot clock, get a chance at a put back. 11 on the shot clock and in the game. And it's Kawhi who's called for the offensive. Harden sells it. Sure does. That left arm is up. And they get the victory, hard fought as it was. Harden afterwards on closing out the trip with a win over the Clips. And they didn't have Durant for the last few either. That was, of course, with Mike Green. Three little things on this game. Harden led the Nets with 37, added 11 rebounds. A 35-point double-double for the 77th time in his career. Second most among active players. LeBron James has exactly one more. For the Nets, it marks their eighth consecutive win against Western Conference opponents. Elias tells us that matches their longest single season win streak against the West in the history of their franchise. As for the Clippers, Kawhi and Paul George scored all but 45 of the team's 108. Didn't get a ton of help from the rest of the squad. Those 45 points are the fewest the rest of the team has scored all. Well, if you like offense, boy, do we have a game for you tonight on ESPN. It's the Nets, it's the Clippers, and Brooklyn leads the NBA in offensive efficiency and field goal percentage this season. As for the Clippers, they are making 42% of their three-pointers, which is best in the NBA. And now that we've been able to digest the Nets, we've been able to take a look at the big three, Kyrie, Katie, and James Harden, Jalen. Rose still here with us, Adrian mm -hmm. Wojnarowski, and I want to know, Jay Rose, who has impressed you the most so far out of the big three? So I know we've talked a lot about Kyrie burning Sage and his walking stick, mm -hmm. but the thing that's actually impressed me more is James Harden's ability to play make. And stop me if you heard me say this before. He's the most unique offensive weapon in the history of the NBA. And follow me here. He's the only player in the history of the league at some point of his career mm -hmm. that will lead the league in three-pointers made, free throws made, total assists in the same se in, a, in a season. Mm -hmm. And this will be his second time leading it in assists. <laughs> Usually the guy that's making the threes ain't leading the league in assists. Yeah. Usually the guy's getting to the free throw line ain't making the most threes. That's James Hart. And you wondered how he was going to adjust in playing in Brooklyn, and it seems as though he's made that adjustment to fit into the offense and make it work. Absolutely. He has to because the other guys already have chips. Sure. And he was the guy that had to suppress his game and also had to break up with his former situation and make everybody in Houston mad at him in order to get there.
Yeah, and Kevin Durant's still working his way back from that hamstring injury. He's missed four straight games. After having been back one game, one practice, and having missed a, a whole other week with COVID issues, and, and I'm told that they're going to just start to ramp uh, Durant back up in practice. They're not going to just put him back on the court in a game, so there's still going to be some time there, but this Brooklyn team, even without Durant, continues to roll on this Western Conference swing, and you know they've got a lot of latitude there to let KD get back to 100% and then bring him back and start to see something we really haven't seen this year, Durant, Harden, and Irving playing together over a consistent basis. Yeah, as we get closer and closer to the second half of the season, you want to be able to see that. But let's talk about the Clippers because they have been rolling in the West. They've won five of their last six games. Uh, what would you say has been the, the, tur the turning point for them or what's working well right now? I got you. The last year in the history of the Clippers was the first time they went into a year and people like me felt like they were legitimate champions. contender mm -hmm. and they folded under those expectations.